So take a few moments of deep breaths as we begin worship. Do you have sound, Joe? Okay. So I invite you to stand as we begin. In God's boundless diversity, we are all made in God's image. We gather together in this time and space, breathing in the Spirit's invitation to connect and learn, to answer Jesus' call to justice and action. In the name of the Holy Parent, and of the Child, and of the Holy Spirit, ever present in our lives. Amen. Your people, Lord, long to feel seen, named, and cared for. The church has excluded and pushed away people, calling them other and different, and waits for those harmed to lead in the work of reconciliation. Today, we worship with open hearts and minds, readying ourselves for the holy ministry of justice and equity work. As your people, we know God is with us, and that your Holy Spirit makes reconciliation possible. As we learn how to make the church a safer space, we trust in the Spirit's guidance. As we seek to be an advocate for our LGBTQIA plus siblings and all who are told they are other, we trust in the Spirit's guidance. As we seek to learn more about the intersectionality of ministry, we trust in the Spirit's guidance. It is with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and grace of Jesus we confess and ask forgiveness. We proclaim with joy and love that people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions matter, that black, indigenous, and people of color matter, that neurodiversity and differing abilities of bodies are sacred, and that we as a church stand firmly against racism, homophobia, transphobia, and any other sin that makes people feel less than because of who God lovingly made them to be. We commit our words and actions to be ones of advocacy for all the people in your kingdom. Holy Creator, we celebrate your boundless diversity and see the ways we are made in your image. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Mighty God, soften our hearts this day as we seek to hear your words and commands. In a world where we are daily confronted with ways we are different, told to make ourselves smaller for the convenience of others, teach us as your people how to celebrate your boundless diversity reflected in every person who is made in your image. To have safe spaces is to experience your saving grace. Guide us to be people of faith who are committed to learning and relearning what it means to welcome, include, celebrate, and advocate for all you call beloved. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. As I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal, that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and say to this people, keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their, may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. And then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even then, even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again like a tinnabreth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed it is its stump. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. We will read responsibly Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The 
The second reading is a reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to a message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared also to me. I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. And he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon, I'm going to turn that off and just focus here. Okay. Simon. Sorry. There it is. Simon, put, out your, put into the deep water and let your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You pray with me for a moment, please. May the words of our mouth, of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When Jesus was starting out in his ministry, he went out into the wilderness for a while. And then he came back and he went about preaching and healing. And he was a pretty popular guy attracting large crowds. 
The way Luke tells the story, though, he didn't yet have disciples in those early days of crowds pushing in on him. And people were drawn to him, for in his presence they glimpsed the realm of God that might yet be. And the crowds kept coming to get a glimpse of what might yet be. And so one day, he came to Lake Gennesaret, also known as the Sea of Galilee, to preach and teach. And because he was so very popular, and he had no crowd control because he did it all by himself, the press of the crowd pushed him to the lake. And he saw some boats. So he said, hey guys, let's go out. So the fishermen who were coming in from their night of of fishing said, okay, and took him out from the shore. And Jesus taught the crowd from the boat for a bit, sitting in a teaching position as rabbis would. And after he taught for a while, he told Simon to go out into the deep water and lay down his nets. Now, Simon Peter had been up all night without catching anything. And he had just been dragooned into using his boat as a teaching platform for God knows how long, literally. Simon really did not want to do this. Nevertheless, he recognized something about Jesus and he decided to do it. Even though he was really tired thought it was pointless. We've been out all night and have caught nothing. Ugh. But you say so, Lord. I'll do it anyway. And Simon pushed out further and cast his nets. And the catch was so great that the nets began to break. And so he called over his partners, James and John, to help with the catch. With their help, The fish were pulled into the boats, so many fish that the boats began to sink. Jesus had done something amazing in their sight. And Simon was afraid. He felt unworthy. He caught a glimpse of just who Jesus was, of the abundance of the realm of God that was coming and he sank to his feet. He cried out, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Jesus pulls him to his feet and reassures him, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. In that confirmation of who he was, Jesus confirmed to Simon Peter that he is worthy, that there is nothing to fear. Jesus tells him he has value in God's eyes and brings him into mission with Jesus. He tells him that he is made in God's image, that he is part of the boundless love that he sees in the overflowing catching of the fish. And Simon Peter does something really crazy too. He listens to Jesus. He leaves behind the large catch of fish that was sinking the boats. He leaves behind his family and his business. He leaves everything that he holds dear to follow Jesus into telling about the realm of God. He has caught just a glimmer of God's boundless love, and yet he changes his life completely to tell that good news to the world. And going into the deep water away from the safety of the shore and letting go of the patterns we know and beginning something new is scary. Doing something when we are tired and tired and tired doesn't feel like it's worth doing sometimes, like it was for Simon that morning in the boat. But sometimes God speaks to us 
And we say, ugh, if you say so. And we do it anyway. And 16 years ago, you of First Lutheran Church, Albany, New York, did something new and scary that some of you really wanted to do and some really did not want to do. You adopted a new mission statement and became a reconciling in Christ congregation. You put yourselves out there as a welcoming congregation at a time when that was highly divisive. It's hard from 2022 to remember what that was like for some of us. Right? Because in those days, pastors weren't allowed to be gay and partnered and be a pastor in the ELCA. In those days, then President Bush had just indicated he would support a constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. This was the cultural climate in which you took a risk, followed God in proclaiming God's boundless love for the world, and started down that path as a reconciling in Christ congregation. And since then, you've shown up in the pride parade, hosted events and gatherings, and advocated for basic dignity and rights for LGBTQIA plus persons in Albany and beyond. You have told people who need to hear it, you are not alone. You are made in God's image. But the issues of 2005 are not quite the same as they are in 2022. Now that same-sex marriage is legal and we have a transgender bishop in the ELCA in California, and our host of legal protections from discrimination in New York State and in the county of Albany that are wildly popular, in fact. It feels a little different, and it might feel like we're done. Yay, we reconciled. But things truly are better for many, many people. Just this past September... I was attended a wedding of a dear classmate of mine who was a pastor in the ELCA to another man presided over by the bishop in Washington, D.C. Something that was just a glimmer of hope when this congregation became reconciling in Christ 16 years ago. But the, while things are better for many, the church generally is still not a welcoming place for many despite how much we long for it to be. LGBTQ identifying pastors wait longer for their first call, have a harder time moving between calls. Pastors of color are still marginalized in our churches and erased from our histories. We have work to do still as people of God reconciling in Christ. Those followers of Jesus, Simon, James, and John, left their lives behind and took a leap of faith to follow Jesus, but it was the only the beginning of their story. And they made many mistakes along the way. They missed the point a lot even denying Jesus at the last hour on Good Friday. And like Simon, James, and John, we hear God's call to cast our nets, and we glimpse the boundless love of God's world. We glimpse what it is to be made in God's image, and we look for that world that may yet be, and we long for it, a world where all people know that they are made in God's image and see themselves in the life of the church. And we're not there yet. We have taken a risk to follow Jesus and we're going to get it wrong sometimes like Simon, James, and John do. For we're still learning and relearning how to be welcoming and affirming. We're still reconciling in Christ and sharing God's love and proclaiming to all people, you are made in God's image. 
in boundless diversity, just as you are, just as we are. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as you are able. Right. With the whole earth, let us lift our hearts and voices in prayer. God, today we pray for anyone suffering from depression, anxiety, eating disorders, PTSD, schizophrenia, or any other mental illness. We ask that you guide them and us to assist them in getting the help that they need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yeah, prayers. God, we think of women and female identifying people as we continue to fight for gender equity. Assist us in this fight so that one day we may all be seen as equals in the eyes of the law. 
God, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayers. prayers. Jesus, we ask that you help us to become better allies, guide those who are learning more about their sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, those who have been victims of hate, those who have not been accepted, and those who are not able to be open about who they are. God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayers. prayers. Creator in heaven, teach us how to be better advocates of our black, brown, indigenous people of color, siblings, and help them to be treated equally as they should have been from the start. God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayers. prayers. God, we pray for those who have been wrongfully convicted of a crime, those who have not gotten the justice that they deserve, and all those whose voices are being ignored by the criminal justice system. We pray that the true wrongdoers are held accountable. God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayers. prayers. God, since March of 2020, we have battled the devastating COVID-19 pandemic. Bless everyone who has been negatively affected by this virus. We pray that it will soon be over. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. Teacher in heaven, we pray that those who are struggling to learn due to learning disabilities, lack of resources, and difficult learning environments, we ask that you help to ensure everyone has access to a good education. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. God, we pray for the sick, and especially for the sick who cannot get help, and those who are named on our prayer list, and those whom we name here aloud or silently in our hearts. We hope that one day everyone will have access to adequate health care. God, in your mercy, hear our Our prayers. prayers. Spirit, we think of anyone who is suffering with the loss of a loved one. We ask you to guide them through the process of grieving. We pray that they would find your comfort and peace. God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayers. prayers. Trusting in the one who made us, dwells in us, and calls us, we lift up these prayers and all others in our hearts, unnamed or aloud. Amen. Amen. That's right. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those around you, joining from home on video as well. Peace be with you. Peace with you. Peace be with you. Please rise and let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, God of justice and accompaniment, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You made us all in your image. In the spirit of abounding love and creativity, you formed us. You sent your advocate so that we can know how to advocate for our beloveds as you strengthen us to love and uphold one another. 
and so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. At this table, make us your body. Form us to be a people of justice and peace. Fill us with gratitude and generosity that we may bear the fruit of love in word and deed. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Nourish our bodies so that we may be fed. Teach us to see you, Christ, in those around us. As we prepare this table for you, we prepare our hearts for your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is set and the feast is ready. Come to God's table, for there is a place for you and enough for all. I invite you to take your communion cup and open up the bread side and have the bread out. This is the body of Christ given for you. And when you're ready, open the wine or grape juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your helps. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all 
strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brief worship note before the benediction. Following the postlude, we'll leave the Zoom up on the TV in here for a few minutes. If those of you at home that are on Zoom would like to hang out and say hi to those in the room and vice versa, invite you to do that. Um, okay. Now, the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. Siblings in Christ, let us go out into the world in peace. Take up the pledge to be an advocate for our LGBTQIA plus siblings and all those in need of inclusion and advocacy. And leave this space with a fervent passion for welcome. Gathered into one by the Spirit, we go in peace to serve the Creator. Seek God's boundless diversity in all you see, and know you are made in God's image. Thanks be to God. <laughs>